Helicopter, perhaps one of man's greatest and most unique inventions. First designed and built by Igor Sikorsky, the VS-300 was quite a machine. Weighing 1,300 pounds and 28 feet long, it had only a 50 horsepower engine, and yet it was still the first ever successful flying helicopter. Now it sits on display at the Henry Ford Museum. From military to flying air ambulance. And that's exactly what we're checking out today. Join me and let's go behind the scenes at Survival Flight. Enjoy the video. Hey, what's up? Welcome back. My name is Caleb from Caleb's Aviation. And for today's video, we're checking out Survival Flight and the 40 year anniversary part two. Welcome to the Livingston County Spencer J. Hardy Airport in Howell, Michigan. Inside is the source of today's adventure, the Survival Flight 40 year anniversary party. Let's go and enjoy the video. As soon as I arrived at Howell Airport, there was already a buzz in the air, with lots of people gathering to head inside to the party. As soon as I entered the main hangar building, I was met with these amazing pictures of the Eurocopter 155 and Lear 45 flown by Survival Flight, and there was a lot to see. There was this awesome 115 scale model of the EC-155, unfortunately it was not for sale. There was this awesome poster board from Survival Flight, with people signing their names and dates of when they were rescued by Survival Flight, including my cousin Sue, who was the ninth call ever. By the way, check out my previous video, Part 1, about more historical stuff about Survival Flight and their fleet. There were so many different things to see here, it was incredible, especially these historical pictures and data figures about Survival Flight, which I found particularly interesting. I'll leave them in in full for you to read here. Pause if you'd like to read closer. So many excellent photos and historical information about survival flight through the years. And if you know me, you know I love my history, especially aviation history. Survival flight is partially owned and operated by the Metro Aviation Group, which has stakes in dozens of other air rescue companies. Maybe I'll make videos at more of these companies in the future, especially on those beautiful EC-145s. Only time will tell. One of my favorite things had to be this historic helmet from Survival Flight. This was awesome. Pretty soon, however, there was enough exploring, as there were speeches by several representatives talking about Survival Flight and their impact. Today we're, uh, we will hear from State Representative, State Representative Kerry Reimans, who will help us highlight our program's life-saving services throughout Michigan. And we've asked uh, Dr. Chris Sonnenday to show how survival flight plays an important role in other areas of our health system. Chris will also help us remember those who have, we have lost associated with the program. Next we'll hear from Dr. Uh, Mark Lowell, and he will introduce uh, Denise and Jake Zagara, who graciously agreed to share their survival flight story with us. And finally, we will spend a few minutes recognizing some current and former team members who have dedicated their professional lives to this program. So without further ado, it's my pleasure to uh, introduce State Representative Carrie Rydans, who uh, is serving her first term representing the 42nd House District, which includes parts of Jackson County and Washington County. Representative Rydans is a proud University of Michigan alumni. <laughs> Hey everybody, this mic works. Um, thank you so much for inviting me to speak today. I come with greetings from all 110 members of the state of Michigan House of Representatives and 38 members of the Senate. Um, since the survival flight serves every single corner of our two pleasant peninsulas, uh, they all are very grateful and I'm very grateful for the work that you do. Thank you so much to the University of Michigan for being a public entity here that serves our entire state. I am here to tell you how to make sure we get the rest of the money that we need to replace the flight, uh, the helicopters and other uh, material that we need. So, all of you who are here, you are represented by one representative and one senator in Lansing. So if you're my representative, you already know that I'm fighting for you to get more money in additional funding for 
the helicopters and the jet. Very critical medical needs. They were told they needed to see Dr. James Stanley here at Michigan Medicine. They had never been to Ann Arbor, didn't know much about of them, and were desperate to find answers. Nice, Dr. Zagar, we'd love to hear from you in May, so please join me up here and share your story with us. Good afternoon. We're grateful to be here with you today to celebrate all the heroes that make up survival flight. Heroes who flew halfway across the country to save our son Jake's life, not once, but twice. It is impossible for us to adequately express our gratitude to survival flight and to the University of Michigan for giving Jake state-of-the-art health care in the most loving and compassionate way. A lot of change, sorry, a lot has changed since Survival Flight rescued Jake 17 years ago. But what brought us to Michigan? The Michigan For the rest of the speeches, click the link in the upper right. By the way, if you're enjoying the video, maybe consider subscribing and tap that subscribe icon, click the bell, leave me a like, a comment, I'd really appreciate it. Now, back to the video. One of the most beautiful things here today had to be this Lear 75 of Survival Flight. However, if you remember from the last video, they had a jet before. They also operated a single Cessna Citation Encore jet from 1998. But unfortunately, in 2007, its life flying for survival flight was unexpectedly cut short. While going out on a routine procurement flight to pick up lungs for a rating transplant recipient, the jet unfortunately crashed into Lake Michigan, and all six men on board would lose their lives. This would be the only fatal crash in survival flight history. First up to see today, however, was the helicopter. This is one of three Eurocopter EC-155Bs equipped as flying air ambulances that survival flight operates. They're set for retirement and being phased out in 2024, but they are simply beautiful, don't you think? I also just really like the U of M colors on them, and it's very unique to find a helicopter with such good colors. Also, that cockpit was pretty awesome. I'd see myself flying that someday, couldn't you? Also, this helicopter, 157 Uniform Mike, in survival flight had quite an impact on my life, but more about that in a future video. This was a special day for survival flight, marking 40 years of operation. There were even local news crews interviewing pilots and workers of survival flight. I, of course, was not invited over here. Now, moving right along, we have the Learjet. Most Learjets are like this one, shown here with very white and bland paint schemes and aren't much to look at, except for the fact that, well, they're a Learjet. But this isn't true here. Survival Flight's Lear 75 is truly stunning. This Learjet is instantly recognizable by its University of Michigan paint scheme, and everything about it is truly beautiful, from nose to tail. And wingtip to wingtip. It is unmistakably University of Michigan survival flight. Go blue. I even got to step on board this Learjet, which was awesome in and of itself. Even the cockpit on this Learjet was stunning, but I guess they're pretty identical on every Learjet. Not that I'd know, as this was the first Learjet I've ever been on. I hope to maybe ride on one someday, but definitely not this one. There's definitely a party atmosphere going on today. There were t-shirts being sold, there was this banner being signed by dozens of individuals connected to Survival Flight, and I even signed it myself. This banner would be put up in the hangar where the Learjet lives here in Howell, and join the dozens of others Survival Flight has throughout their years of operation. Pretty special. There were definitely a lot of people here today. I didn't interview anyone personally, but lots of people appeared to be swapping stories and having just a generally great time. There was lots of merchandise being passed out as well, and tons of swag, including the 40th anniversary pin, which I managed to snag. However, if you saw the last video, you know I have more than my fair share of survival flight gear, so I only took what I really wanted. Today really reminded me of an inaugural flight, or such a special occasion. There was food out, Lots of people were mingling and walking about, and it was just a really special day. Anyways, that's going to be it for this very special video, and very special day. I hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed making it as well.
And, as always, until next time, wishing Survival Flight 40 more years of blue skies and tailwinds.